Hi everyone and welcome to day 27 out of 30 of the 30 day no sugar challenge. We are getting close to the end and it's also getting close to Christmas. So I hope that you will be able to take some of these tools that you have learned and practiced during these 30 days to maybe not eat sugar over Christmas or just to soften the damage that uh, we usually do to ourselves during that time of the year. So if you're following this series and you like what I'm doing, then please feel free to subscribe. I would really much appreciate that. And when you're watching this video, just give it a thumbs up. You have the button down there. It's really easy to do and it's a very nice way of you to support me with what I'm doing. And you can also share it with all your friends that need to quit sugar and they can sign up for the No Sugar Challenge themselves. I might have closed reg registrations, but I'm going to open that up again in late January and then I'm going to have it as a, a group that is going together for a set period of time so we all start at the same time because now it's a little bit of a drip feed for everyone who's joining. So today I'm going to talk about possibilities and you may wonder why this is relevant to quitting sugar but let me tell you one thing. When we can see past our goal and what it can give us our current goal or quitting sugar can be turned into just another tool. So let me give you an example of this. So if I want to do the 30 day no sugar challenge because I want to lose weight, I can come up with many, many excuses for why I can start eating sugar again and still lose weight. So there are many ways for me to get to my goal. I don't necessarily have to quit sugar to do that. So it's entirely possible for me to eat sugar and still lose weight and I'll just come up with plan B instead. That is a very, very good escape from the pain of not eating sugar. So that might be a low calorie diet or an extensive exercise program, I don't know. But there are many ways for you to actually lose weight if that is what you're doing and that's fine. And if uh, that's what you really want to do, then go ahead and do that. That's, you know, no skin off my nose. You, you're the one who's in charge of your life. You decide what you want to do. I'm just going to tell you what I think is the best approach to this. I think that it's a lot more interesting to think about our possibilities. So if I'm thinking about what if I quit sugar for good? What could my life look like then? Because this can be extremely motivating when we can see past that weight loss goal or whatever. Now I'm working on not eating sugar. What would my life look like if I could quit it for forever? Or for the majority of the time, maybe I just have sugar three times a year or whatever. What would my life look like? So for me, I would, I would feel very, very empowered as if I could achieve anything. Just being in control of sugar and planning and knowing that I can do that without ending up on a binge feels very empowering to me. But to take that extra step and never have sugar again, for example, I would really feel like I'm God. I can do anything because it feels like an impossibility to me. Um, I'm almost there mentally and I'm going to go there. That's my goal. But just getting there is obviously one of my obstacles. I have obstacles in the way, mostly in my brain. I would also probably feel very right in my body um, because I'm not just talking weight wise now, I'm sure I would lose a bit of weight, but every time I'm on no sugar or very, very little sugar for an extensive period of time, I feel very strong and very energetic as if I'm almost walking on clouds. There is no heaviness in my body. And that is a really, really nice feeling. And I get the same thing in my brain. That's with the mental clarity. So when I'm not having sugar, I have so much better ability to focus on things and especially the things that I want to achieve. So it's more I'm more self-motivated to do the things that I enjoy doing. So that could be um, going outside kayaking or building my business or whatever it is. I have much more energy for all of it. And the one thing that um, I love not having is the sugar hangover the next day. I don't get it every time I eat sugar. 
but it's a bit the poison is in the dose so depending on how much i have i might wake up the next day i'll be tired in the morning i'll be really hungry i have a headache it doesn't feel good i'm basically wasting my life so if, if i'm eating sugar and then i get a sugar hangover the next day is gone i'm not motivated to do anything if you said oh do you want to go out kayaking or go out um walking up the mountain or something I'm there i have a headache i'm tired i'm not really motivated to do anything and let's not talk about trying to build a business i'm not going to be very motivated to do that or stand in front of the camera and record these videos for you i'm not going to want to do that when i have a sugar hangover but when i'm not i'm more than happy to do it i really enjoy it i enjoy everything and i feel like i just want to do everything i want to do too much probably and I would also feel so much more peaceful and content with life in general, the way that I want to feel. I'm quite a laid back person to start with, but the business in my brain when I'm consuming a lot of sugar and the mental fog that is there, everything together is just just destroying my life really. It's, um, there's, so, there's so many areas in which sugar destroys my life and robs me of a lot of time that I could have spent actually enjoying life or doing something more meaningful. So now it's your turn. Let me know what your life could look like if you quit sugar for good and leave a comment and let me know or go to the Facebook group. It would be very interesting to see. See you tomorrow.